Hello, my name is Burke Bear and I'm 12 years old. I came here today to talk about food for thought and why we should be thinking more about food. Mindless eating versus mindful eating and tantalizing our taste buds with slow food. Now, you might be wondering why a kid like me would care about this kind of stuff. Well, I'm going to tell you the story of how I found out about these things. Back when I was eight, I was looking over my mom's shoulder while she's logging on her email. And something caught my eye. Something about mercury and high fructose corn syrup? Well, I knew what mercury was because I've learned a little bit about it in third grade science and that it could kill you. But what I didn't know about was high fructose corn syrup. So I asked my mom what it was. And she said it was a sweetener used in sodas. And it was right there. That was the moment. That something inside of me clicked. And I said to my mom, me, as an eight-year-old kid, I'm not going to drink sodas anymore. And when this happened, my interest in this stuff called high fructose corn syrup, or HFCS, got really high. After that, some more of my questions were, what is food? Now for some people, food is these artificially flavored and colored cereal loops, microwave mac and cheese, and the highly processed TV dinners. Look here, the supposedly healthy yogurt has high fructose corn syrup in it, which is not healthy at all. So I've learned not just to read the front label that says 100 calories, I read the back one too, that says ingredients. Now this is real, now this is real food. Well, no, no it's not, back, back, <laughs> sorry. Now this is real food. All these vegetables here grown organically and biodynamically. And that was some good free range pasture raised pork. This is real food compared to that other stuff I was talking about. Mindless consumption is a big problem in America. Now, I also used to eat mindlessly too. I would also just follow the ads on TV and in magazines, but now I look beyond the advertisements and I say, no, I'm not going to eat that processed junk. Here are just some of the dangers of fast food, which amazed me when I first found out about them. Now, I personally don't want to eat anything with even one health risk, do you? Some of these side effects frighten me like obesity, diabetes, and cancer. According to the Center for Disease Control's report, obesity now affects over 17% of children and adolescents in the US, triple the rate from just one generation ago. I needed to realize what I was eating instead of shoving food into my face blindly. I needed to think more about my food and where it came from, how it was grown, processed, packaged, and how it ended up in my refrigerator and on my dinner table. I believe that we need to ask questions because if I didn't ask questions, I wouldn't be speaking to you now. It's a great way to learn something new. And if you're wondering something about our food system, just ask like I did, and do your own research too. I've learned not to follow everything on TV because to me, it's like a black curtain keeping us from seeing the real picture. Are California cows really happy? I'm guessing probably not if they live in a confined animal feeding operation or CAFO for short. A CAFO is when animals are packed tightly together in meadow barns, closed off from the sunlight and fresh air. Also, because of the unsanitary conditions, they have to be fed antibiotics daily, so they will not get sick. <sighs> Did you know meat from grass-fed animals contains more omega-3s than meat from grain-fed animals? And I've learned that omega-3 fatty acids are good for us in terms of reduced blood pressure, likelihood of heart attack, and risks of certain cancers. The benefits of grass-fed beef, when compared to grain-fed beef are lower total co t fat content, higher beta carotene, higher vitamin E, more B vitamins, calcium, magnesium, and potassium content, a higher total omega-3 fatty acid content, a better ratio of omega-3s to omega-6s, and a lower saturated fat content. All of these things lead to better health. Now, I don't follow, now, I needed to think more about my food. 
other than was it on sale or was it a cheap price? I needed to think how it was grown, with chemicals and pesticides or compost. So I'd like to get it from the good old farmer rather than from the supermarket. Now, my friend and mentor, Joel Salatin, asks, why is it that we have a relationship with our banker, accountant, and real estate agent? But why not our farmer? I believe that we need to have a relationship with our farmer because the farmer provides us with something so important, food. High fructose corn syrup can be found everywhere you go. Just read the ingredient list. It's in everything, like peanut butter, bread, hot dog buns, and even salad dressings. Pretty much anything that has a sweetener in it. High fructose corn syrup is a big health issue because during the processing, mercury gets into the sweetener. And why do big companies use high fructose corn syrup instead of cane sugar? Because it's cheap. And let's not forget about all those government subsidies to grow corn. Genetic modification is when a gene from a totally different species is inserted into the DNA of a plant or animal. To do this, conglomerations have to use a bacteria as a carrier to get the gene into the DNA. And what is the most commonly used bacteria? The cauliflower mosaic virus. GMO stands for genetically modified organisms, and they are the biggest issue for me. Since the producers of the seeds try their hardest to keep the public from knowing about them. And it just makes me mad that the government allows these companies to go behind our backs and do something that goes against nature. Hippocrates said, let food be your medicine. Now that is an awesome quote. To me, it means eat good food and you stay healthy. Eat bad food and you get sick. Good food has the ability to keep us healthy. You know what I mean? Mindful consumption is when there is thought put into what you're eating. When this dish was put on my table, I thought many different things like, is it healthy? Is it tasty? Is it organic? Might I want seconds? This is a classic example of mindless consumption right here. Just look at the blank stare in the guy's eye. <laughs> I'm guessing he didn't think one thing about what kind of ingredients were in those frozen waffles or how they were processed. But I probably wouldn't have either about four years ago. If you want to find out how to tantalize your taste buds, eat slow food. Food prepared, well, slow. Everything is made from scratch and it's so good. It may take a while to make, but it's worth the wait. And now, what I like to say to people that say organic food is too expensive, you can either pay the farmer or you can pay the hospital. Since on a long-term basis, you can eat the really cheap, whole, uh, crappy food from fast food, but you can, or you can eat the good, wholesome food from the farmer. I feel that I have become a part of the solution. My hope is that many other people will too by making a difference in their own communities and sharing with friends and families for real change. I hope that I have sparked a thirst for knowledge in this subject for you today. Buy local because it's thousands of miles fresher. Eat organic because it's better for you and your family. And we need to think more about our food because if we don't, we might just get fooled. Doing these three things really do make a difference. Thank you. Thank you.